so, you know, being in critical care, what is kind of the current state of intensive care right now? What is that? Are we seeing the hospitals overrun? Like, are, are you guys overrun in your department? How is that going? I have friends throughout the country, everywhere from uh, New York to uh, Texas, throughout California, the Midwest. During this pandemic, I've been in touch with all of them, sometimes daily, sometimes weekly. We, besides professional societies that are sharing information, which I do also, I, I share information between our colleagues because this is new. This is like a new frontier because we've never seen this before, okay? Now, some people say, well, yeah, we had SIRS in 2003 and we had MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. And yes, it's similar, but this is different, okay? This is everywhere. So the state of critical care went through some stress. And it's not something that, the, and it's not just critical care. Critical care is one of the battlefields for this. It's the emergency room. It's the doctor's office. It's the parking lot, okay? No one wants to come in, but everybody wants to sit in the parking lot and come in when they can. So every, there's, it's, there's been such a, a surge on resources and stress on how you handle this because at the beginning and still to this day, we're still trying to figure it out. The ICUs go through surges, okay? It would be like if you, God forbid, there was a bus accident or a plane accident next to your hospital. If you have a surge in your community, you have so many hospitals, so many beds, so many critical care beds, and all of those people would have to come to your hospital. They would impact your hospital because you're not used to having, in some cases, hundreds of people come in a day or even so many admissions per day. So now what you're used to enabling to handle a certain volume, because there is a process. You get checked into the hospital. You get your vital signs. You get your blood. A doctor sees you. A nurse sees you. Then a doctor sees you again. And then you're seen again after you get all the diagnostic things. So there's a process to take care of you. And now when you come in, with everybody competing for the resources of the speed to get those results back to you, now it stresses the system because you only have so many lab machines that can run a blood count. You have only so many machines that can run a count for your electrolytes. You have only so many breathing machines. Now you're starting to say, well, gosh, if a regular hospital has always had an adequate enough amount of ventilators and you were to have a big surge, of unprecedented historical you know amount of patients that come in you're you're not prepared for that so the good news is that you know to me at this point it's more like a w now we've seen a big surge and then it's come slowed down then we're seeing another surge and it's slowed down and i suspect we have a few more ups and downs on that long w to come now, the, also the other thing is, is you know, we're just one country. I think the big thing about this disease is not to be U.S. centric. You have to be Earth centric. You got to think about the Earth as a whole because it's in all different types of countries and in in this global economy, we're all affected by this in all the countries, and everybody is attempting to figure out how to treat this, how to stay open how to keep business going, how to keep the hospitals full for everybody else that doesn't have coronavirus, which is just as important, and to move forward. So the state of the ICU right now, we're, we're, learn, we're learning, and we've learned a lot in the last few months in the world. We're getting better at treating these patients, which is great. We're getting better because we're being aggressive, and we're treating them right when they come in the door. And we have more tools to treat the symptoms of this virus. So, we'll see, we'll see we will see how things I'm expecting, you know, that it'll it'll ebb and flow. Thank you so much, Dr. Sherman. I appreciate so much that you came down here. We're socially distanced and it's really just epic to be able to see you and talk to you in person about obviously what's going on uh, with this whole pandemic. And I just, I cannot say thank you enough because I think this is really gonna help a lot of people. So if you would like more information about prostate cancer or some of the topics that we talked about today, you can visit our website at pcri.org. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new prostate cancer videos every week. And if you appreciated the information that Dr. Sherman presented today. Give us a good like and a thumbs up and we know to produce more content like this. We hope you have a great week.